Okay, today I'm going to show you how to merge three images uh, to create an HDR image. Uh, but first I'll just talk about these three pictures. Um, and I'm numbered from one, two, and three. Uh, number two is my uh, normal exposure. This is the one where I just turn the camera on and let it decide um, the correct exposure for the lighting in this particular room. The previous photo is a plus two exposure so it is uh, two times the light uh, that the camera was telling me to shoot this scene at. And then this last one was uh, two times less light. So we can notice that um, in this darker image the outside information where it's really bright is very detailed. So basically that's what we was exposed here or what we were shooting for is the outside detail. The standard shot does is the best that it can to get an average reading overall and then the light one, the overexposed one, gets as much detail um, and this could one, this could even be better as much detail in the dark areas as we can. Okay, and, and the idea behind doing an HDR is to get detail in all areas, shadows and highlights and of course the midtones. Um, so most likely you've imported your photos into iPhoto and um, you just want to either open all three of the images up in, in Photoshop or for this demo I'm just going to drop them into a folder I've placed on the desktop called HDR demo. So I'm going to drag these three over there and drop them. And I am finished with iPhoto so I can quit iPhoto. And I'll just show you that I've got those in this folder. And then I'll go into Photoshop. And just like with the panorama, we're going to use an automated function. So go to File, down to Automate, and then uh, down to Merge to HDR. Now, if you had the uh, three pictures open in Photoshop, you could just add open files and they would be listed here. But I'm going to browse for the files that I want to use. And that will bring up my open dialog box here in a second. And I'm going to go to my desktop and go to this HDR demos folder and just command A and then click open. So we've got one, two, and three. And then I'll just click OK, and Photoshop will begin to do its thing. And after it's layered them all, we will be presented here in a second. Now it does align them, so if they are, you know, if you can't shoot with the tripod and there is uh, some variation, slight variation in the way you shot them. Hopefully they will line up good. And we are presented with this dialog box. Okay, And this is a 32-bit image. And a 32-bit image has a very wide color gamut, meaning that um, we're actually not seeing all the color in this photo. Um, the, the screens are 16-bit and this uh, particular image is 32, so this is there's actually more information here than we can see. Um, we can see the uh, the curve here of the uh, the image and uh, all the values within it. And I'm just going to simply click OK. Um, adjusting this slider here does not have an effect on anything. Just click OK and let it do its thing. And then we are presented with a 32-bit image. Now, we're not finished at this point, but we do want to save this 32-bit image. So File Save, or Save As, rather. And uh, I'll just call this uh, BinR. And... Uh, HDR2 and this will only 32-bit image will only save as um, these 
what, five, one, two, three, four, six different file formats and just save your 32-bit image as a Photoshop file. You will not be turning in this particular file. This is just in case you mess up doing your editing and you can easily come back. All right, so we have our 32-bit file. Now what we want to do is make our adjustments and do some color mapping and try to bring out the details that we, we can't see right now. And in order to do that, you've got to change the, the mode from 32-bit to either 16 or 8. And we're going to go up here to Image, go to Mode, and then we're just going to switch this to an 8-bit image. And that will bring up this HDR conversion dialog. Um, there's a drop down at the top here that says method and um, what we're really interested in is the local adaption. Okay, so we'll choose that one and something will start to happen and then we want to drop down toning curve and histogram. Okay, now this is the same histogram we saw before in uh, when we um, first loaded the images. And you can see that, um, I mean, overall, the image is, you know, it's, it's really intense as far as the color. It's really too bright. Um, it's not what we're really wanting at this time. Uh, you can adjust the radius, and that this stuff will adjust the light, sort of the darkness, lightness of the image. You can really um, mess around with those if you want to and see what happens in the image. Um, if you would like. I do really want you to explore this, but the main thing is to adjust the curve down here. Uh, and just like when we adjust the levels of an image with the sliders um, to match the the curve and sort of just, you know, to bring down the, uh, the con to bring up the contrast, what I'm going to do is lower, um, take this left side in and bring some darks back into it. And now you just want to move this stuff around and get it where you like it. I'll move the brights in a little bit. And you can actually come along this point and just adjust this curve and just really explore what happens. Now the idea behind this is to get a really good photographic image, not a uh, unrealistic unbelievable image. Okay, now I'm, I'm down here in the dark, so I'm just trying, I'm looking at my shadow detail on my couch, and I'm trying to lighten that up some, and see if I can bring out some more detail there, and that looks, that looks better, okay? Um, you know, this mid-tones here, I come out in the mid-tone range, and see if I can adjust those a little bit, slide this around, Yeah. Okay. And you really want to explore this curve. You know, just move stuff around, see what happens with it. You know, if I move it way up like this, it's going to really intensify the brights because this is my whites on this side. I can darken my brights by bringing this down, and that does start to bring a lot more detail uh, back into the exterior here, this bright area. So just just explore the curve. Again, don't take it to the point where it is unbelievable, unphotographic. Uh, like if I did something like that, you know, that's just way out of, that's not what we want, okay? I mean, there's some neat things going on here, but that is not what we're wanting to do. Uh, so, uh, you know, get it back, try to get it back to where, close to where it was. <laughs> And again, if you mess up, you know, like I've really sort of messed up, I just hold the Option key down on the keyboard and reset, and it takes me all the way back to the beginning. Switch back to Local Adaption, and then tweak your curve. And I'll go back through this really quick. Okay. All right, not not too bad. 
and I'll just stop there. Just click OK. All right, and since this um, is going to be converted into a 16-bit or a 8-bit image, um, this is the one we can now save as a JPEG to turn in. All right. So there is our HD image. Now let me uh, HDR image, um, high dynamic range. So we've got great detail in the uh, shadow areas of the couch, this dark couch. Pretty good detail outside, good detail in the corners of the room. You know, nice, nice detail everywhere. Uh, we could continue to work with this if we wanted, if we want to do some sharpening, uh, if we want to work with the shadow and highlights adjustment, which I think I'll, I'll give a whirl now. Image adjustment, come down here to shadow and highlights, and, you know, see what happens with this. Um, might be able to introduce a little bit more detail into my shadows. Yeah, yeah a little bit better. Just brightened it up some. Brought out a little bit more. Okay. So, HDR. Now the subject matter here, everything's nice and still. A uh, tripod was used. No camera movement. All the images lined up perfectly. Um, if you have movement in your uh, subject if you handhold the camera and there's some slight uh, changes there may be some um, little shifts occurring that occur as uh, that look like blur or um, bad focus or something like that or some muddy areas but that's okay as long as you're um, uh, doing the three exposures uh, and uh, exploring this hopefully out of all the images you shoot you'll get something successful. So with this one, I can save this one. And I'm going to save as again. And this one I'll call uh, HDR3. And I'm going to save this one as a JPEG. OK. And I'll save it. And again, always choose large file when you get the JPEG options. Alrighty. So there you have it. Merging three exposures to create an HDR image. Good luck.